Welcome, my friends. Well, there is stunning news coming from Disney today. Wall Street is worried Disney theme parks could be losing their magic. Disney also made news a month ago when it scrapped plans for new Florida campus and cancels mass employee relocation. The announcement comes amid a bitter feud between the company and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis centered in part around the company's special district and development plans. As you already know, Disney has cut its metaverse division as part of the layoffs that will begin this week. What does it mean for the economy? And, what does it mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into all of that, please press the like button and leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. And, before we continue, a word from the sponsor of this video. Today's sponsor is InnerLife.com, creator of the InnerLife STS system. InnerLife STS is a cloud mobile platform for mental health care and its integration with primary medical care. InnerLife STS is designed for assessment, data collection and analytics, documentation, and progress tracking. InnerLife STS creates and composes conceptualized narratives and builds them into professional-grade reports. These reports are designed for use by mental health professionals, primary care physicians, justice system professionals and universities and include mental health assessment reports, mental health treatment reports, and treatment progress reports. And InnerLife STS uses doctor-selected pseudonames for all patients. So, only the healthcare professional knows the patient identity. Disney's parks, experiences, and products business brought in the lion's share of profits for the entertainment giant last year. Now, there's growing concern that theme parks could be losing their magic. The company said the back half of this year will see a moderation in demand at the domestic parks, especially when compared to last year's 50th anniversary celebration at Walt Disney World. This comparison, coupled with inflationary cost pressures, including from a new union agreement, is expected to drive a modest adverse impact to domestic parks and experiences operating margins in the third quarter compared to the prior year, former CFO Christine McCarthy warned during the company's latest earnings call in May. There are signs that moderation is coming to fruition. According to data provided by Touring Plans, a trip planning company that tracks wait times at theme parks, the 4th of July holiday was relatively quiet at Disney's domestic parks in both Florida and California, further emphasizing signs of a summer slowdown. Orlando's Walt Disney World saw average July 4th wait times hit 27 minutes at Magic Kingdom, 27 minutes at Epcot, 18 minutes at Hollywood Studios, and 25 minutes at Animal Kingdom. July 4th, 2022, saw wait times at Magic Kingdom average 31 minutes. Epcot clocked in at 35 minutes while Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom saw delays of 44 minutes and 34 minutes, respectively. Looking at the data for pre-pandemic times, Touring Plans said Magic Kingdom averaged 47 minutes on July 4, 2019, with Epcot at 33 minutes, Hollywood Studios at 33 minutes, and Animal Kingdom at 37 minutes. Touring Plans said the drop in wait times could be due to several factors, including the intense summer heat in Florida and more Americans pulling back on vacations following last year's revenge travel phenomenon. And obviously, lower wait times alone don't necessarily translate to a big drop in attendance. Still, the data underscores Wall Street's worries about the theme park's business slowing as Disney combats other challenges in its entertainment business amid a broader industry shift to streaming. Disney shares have struggled despite severe cost reductions and restructuring efforts, which included company-wide layoffs that recently hit a pool of on-air talent at ESPN. The stock is down about 8% on a year-over-year -year basis and has sunk roughly 12% over the past three months. Disney's theme parks such as Magic Kingdom Park at Walt Disney World Resort are important to the company's bottom line. In its latest quarter, the operating income for the parks hit $2.17 billion, representing a 23% year-over-year increase. Last year, the business accounted for 65% of Disney's total segment operating income of $12.1 billion. KeyBank Capital Markets analyst Brandon Nispel, who downgraded the stock late last month on meaningful uncertainty, surrounding the 2024 financial setup, said recent theme park softness was a top headwind heading into earnings. Disneyland growth due to its 100th anniversary celebration is more than offset by Walt Disney World's contraction from comparisons against its 50th anniversary celebration. We worry the tough comps are not properly reflected in consensus, he wrote in a note to clients on June 29. The analyst added the company's new labor contract in Florida, 
coupled with the accelerated depreciation of the StarCruiser Hotel, will further pressure margins. The company has made several changes to its theme parks in recent months, including bringing back its Walt Disney World annual park passes after halting sales more than a year ago. The annual passes, which range in fees from $749 to $1,399, come with previously announced perks like free digital photo downloads and the opportunity to visit the theme parks after 2 p.m. without a reservation, except on Saturdays and Sundays at Magic Kingdom. Prior to those updates, customers had complained about lengthy wait times and sky-high ticket prices. Disney CEO Bob Iger reportedly had expressed concerns regarding significant price increases at the company's parks implemented by former CEO Bob Chappick. Although unlikely Iger will reverse the price hikes, Disney fans could possibly see a reduction in the number of increases in addition to more incentives for parks members. Disney has abandoned plans to open up a new employee campus in Lake Nona, Florida, amid rising tensions with the state's governor. The campus was originally slated to open in 2022-2023, but was later delayed to 2026. Disney is headquartered in Burbank, California, but operates a number of satellite offices across the country and the world. DeMero said employees who have already moved to Florida may be able to relocate back to California. It is clear to me that the power of this brand comes from our incredible people, and we are committed to handling this change with care and compassion," he said. Disney's announcement comes amid a bitter feud between the company and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The company filed a lawsuit accusing DeSantis and the new board members of its special district of carrying out a campaign of political retribution against the entertainment giant. DeSantis targeted Disney's special district, formerly called the Reedy Creek Improvement District, after the company publicly criticized a controversial Florida bill, dubbed, Don't Say Gay, by critics, that limits discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity in classrooms. The special district has allowed the entertainment giant to effectively self-govern its Orlando Parks operations for decades. The district was ultimately left intact, but its five-member board was replaced with DeSantis Picks and renamed the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. Disney filed its suit in late April after the new board voted to undo development contracts that the company said it struck to secure its investments. The company has since updated that lawsuit to include newly passed legislation targeting its monorail system as further evidence of retaliation by the governor. Iger has publicly lambasted DeSantis and the Florida government, noting that Disney has created thousands of indirect jobs, brings around 50 million visitors to Florida every year and is the state's largest taxpayer. In a statement later Thursday, representatives for DeSantis called the decision to nix the Lake Nona campus, unsurprising. Disney announced the possibility of a Lake Nona campus nearly two years ago. Nothing ever came of the project, and the state was unsure whether it would come to fruition, DeSantis' office said in the statement. DeMero reiterated in his memo that the company still plans to invest $17 billion in Florida over the next 10 years, including the addition of around 13,000 jobs. The company currently employs more than 75,000 people in the state. Disney declined to provide specific updates on that investment, but has previously announced plans to update park attractions, expand existing parks and add more cruise ships to its fleet in Florida. I remain optimistic about the direction of our Walt Disney World business, DeMero told employees. As you know if you follow this channel, Disney has announced thousands of layoffs. The latest layoffs were initially announced in February and will impact about 7,000 employees, according to a memo sent by Iger. The job cuts will be cross-company, hitting Disney's media and distribution division, parks and resorts, and ESPN. Since returning as CEO, Iger has reorganized the company and acknowledged that he'd consider selling Hulu. The layoffs are part of a broader effort to reduce corporate spending and boost free cash flow. Disney said last month it plans to cut $5.5 billion in costs, including $3 billion in content spend. Disney had about 190,000 employees at the end of Q4. But we should note that Disney Plus has accumulated 100 million subscribers in just three years since its inception. By way of comparison, Netflix took 20 years to build a subscriber base of 220 million. But the streaming business is overcrowded and fragmented. According to Chappic, streaming will become cash flow profitable by the end of 2024. As you probably already heard, other large media and entertainment companies have made job cuts this year. Warner Brothers Discovery. Netflix. HBO Max. I don't know about you, but I really wonder about this announcement. It seems that CEOs are getting the message from Wall Street analysts that the more layoffs, the more we will recommend your stock.
Disney has traditionally been a very well-managed company. And, despite its losses, Disney Plus has shown excellent growth. If it truly becomes profitable in 2024, that will be a good outcome. But given the fragmentation of the streaming industry, consolidation must take place. So, Disney needs to decide whether it wants to be a buyer or a seller in that space. Given Disney's vast library of titles and ownership of ESPN, I would say that it needs to be a buyer. And, Warner Brothers Discovery needs to find a buyer. I would say that Disney needs to get its share price and earnings up so that it can be something of a consolidator in the streaming space. Hopefully for Disney, this newly discovered financial discipline will help to get them where they need to be. But, what do you think? Please leave us a comment below and hit the like button. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.